My first opportunity on TV, yeah. yeah, I was just doing it to make a mic. I was supposed to get paid, but I ended up not getting the pay. There was nobody to clear any road for anybody. Some of the movies that we even shot way back then, mm. they will give you like the upfront payment, the balance, you will not get it. Mm. Even if you have a contract, you can't go and sue them. It's a taboo oh. to go and sue a producer in that era. That means you're done. We just took it like the price that we had to pay to clear the road. There was no stand-up comedy industry when we started. We created what is today's Nigeria stand-up comedy industry. And Night of a Thousand Love contributed immensely to nurturing that industry. So MCing events and stand-up comedy, there was no, you were begging people, convincing them to even give you a chance to entertain them. For the corporate ones, they'll be like, so what are you coming to do? And so you're saying, please just give me 10 minutes. If you don't like what I'll do, then, then don't pay me. Was there, at any point in your life, you thought of switching careers? It, it wasn't an easy decision in the beginning. I was in Lagos for my national service. Yeah. I had serious accommodation problem. I had financial problem. Then I sought the advice of people who were older than myself. And at the end of the day, I made a decision that I was going to take this gamble. I put my happiness up and above everything else. I decided that, okay, let me go with what makes me happy first and see how I can turn what makes me happy into what makes me money. Once that, once there's intercession of money and happiness, then you're good to go. You can say you're, you have a career you're proud of. How are you, sir? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Very well, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, please tell us about yourself. Okay, um, my name is Okay. Uh, most people know me as okay because you know, I'm a Nigerian. Uh, I call myself a motivational comedian. Uh, most people do comedy these days, so everybody's a comedian. I'm a motivational comedian. Uh, movie actor, TV radio host, uh, family man. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, um, tell us about how this whole journey started. Mm, uh, uh, this whole journey started so many years ago, school days, but professionally it started in 1993 uh, during my youth service when I decided, okay, let's, um, you know, if this brings happiness, we might as well do it for a living as well. So, so and it's been 30 years I've been in the entertainment industry. Um, to God be the glory, made some accomplishments, milestones, uh, helped shape the entertainment industry in Nigeria as well. Uh, I'm one of the creators of the Night of a Thousand Laughs, which changed the entertainment, which helped nurture the stand-up comedy industry in Nigeria. Uh, I'm a member board of trustees of the Actors Guild of Nigeria. We set up the guild uh, way back to also help, you know, build Nollywood. Um, yeah, those are contributions in the industry. Um, yeah, and God has also used the craft to bless me, happily married, three children, you know, and yeah, we're still here ha trying in our own little way to make society better. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the point here for me is like you've been in this industry for 30 years. Yes. Like, yeah. some of us were still like babies <laughs> as I did. Wow. So, how, do you, how are you able to balance like work life and family life at the mm. same time? I, I think everything is planning. You know, mm. everything is time management in life. Mm. You know, you must be able to plan your life in such a way that, uh, you know, you are portion to each of the various aspects of life that are important to you. Mm. What, what may be important to me may not be important to another person. Some people are not family-oriented people. Yes. They don't want to marry or have kids. It's too much responsibility for them, you know, so they may not have to worry about mm. that. But I'm a family man, I, I love family. Though my family don't live with me in Nigeria, you know, but at certain times of the year, no matter how what I'm doing, no matter how big the project is, I must go home to go spend some time with family, you know, so, so it's about planning your time. Uh, what I've also done with my career is that because I do different things in the entertainment value chain, like comic, like shows and movie acting, uh, sometimes it may look like they are conflicting, mm -hmm. so you there are seasons when I just focus on stand-up comedy, then other seasons are doing the acting. So yeah, that is... If we look at the recent mm. um, comedy scene right now, we mm. see that we have an easier platform for people to actually um, project themselves. Mm -hmm. So what was, your, what was your major challenge starting up? And were you given a platform? 
Uh, you need to understand that for stand-up comedy, there was no stand-up comedy industry when we started. Yeah. There was nothing like that, you know. So we created what is today's Nigeria stand-up comedy industry. And Night of a Thousand Love contributed immensely yeah. to nurturing that industry. So no, there was no, there was nobody to clear any road for anybody. We loved to do this thing, but we are not doing it for money. We were doing it out of passion. And we were also looking at other climb where they have already established and trying to see, okay, how do they do it? How can we model our own to satisfy our own need here? You know, so that is how we managed to shape the industry in Nigeria. And I'm excited that young people are on board and it's getting bigger and bigger. Okay, so talking about the challenges, was there um, a time you thought of switching career? Was there at any point in your life you thought of switching careers? Um, it wasn't an easy decision in the beginning, mm. okay, because I came to, I was in Lagos for my national service mm. and uh, I, I didn't have, I had serious accommodation problem, I had financial problem, you know, so I mean naturally for a young person, I think I was still like 23 then, mm. going on 24, yeah. so your challenge is, I know nobody here, I have no support here, how do I sustain myself? So is it to get a monthly paid job, nine to five, or do I keep hustling this thing that wasn't even paying, you know, that much at the time, you know? But, you know, but then I sought the advice of people who were older than myself, and you know, at the end of the day, I made a decision that you know, I was going to take this gamble, which is why my personal mantra is the pursuit of happiness, mm -hmm. you know. So I put my happiness up and above everything else. I decided that okay. Let me go with what makes me happy first and see how I can turn what makes me happy into what makes me money. Because once, that, once there's intercession of money and happiness, mm -hmm. then you're good to go. You can say you're, you have a career you're proud of. And thank God it worked. Interesting. Yeah. What was your first pay like? like what was your ah, first pay like? There was no first pay. The first job, they didn't pay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the first pay was zero. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The first, my first opportunity on TV, yeah. Yeah, I was just doing it to make a mark. I was supposed to get paid, but I ended up not getting the pay, you know. What some really of, the, some of the movies that we even shot way back then, mm. they will give you like the upfront payment, the balance, you will not get it. Mm. Even if you have a contract, you can't go and sue them because, I mean, you, <laughs> you it's a taboo oh. to go and sue a producer in that era. That means you're done. Means you're done. Who will call you again? They'll just blacklist you. Uh, this one, it is suit, it is suit producer. Mm -hmm. And how much are you suing for? The money set is not enough to pay lawyer. So it won't make sense to even go to court. So the money just goes like that. Mm. You know, so we just took it like the price that we had to pay to clear the road, you know. Then, of course, uh, MC in events and stand up comedy, there was no, you were begging people, convincing them to even give you a chance to entertain them. You understand? And they will be like, for the corporate ones, they'll be like, so what are you coming to do? Is a banker's event. What is a comedian doing in a banker's event? And so you're saying, please just give me 10 minutes. If you don't like what I'll do, you know, then don't pay me. So sometimes they'll give you the 10 minutes and when they like it, then okay, okay, that's fine. We didn't have a budget for it now, but subsequently we'll call you, you know. So they'll put anything in an envelope and give you, and you'll be grateful. Wow, interesting. That must be very tough because look at what's going on now. Mm -hmm. we, people can make money from anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Oh, now, now when they call you, they, they negotiate your fee. Mm -hmm. But then we are calling them to beg them. Not even call because there were no phones. So you are physically going to their offices to go and beg to say, I heard you people are having this function. Can I just come there and do five minutes? They say, five minutes of what? <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so what's the next project we should be expecting from you? Oh yeah, uh, very soon, this December, for the Christmas market, you guys are the first to hear. Watch out for Bank Alert, it will be in cinemas. Bank Alert is a movie that I partnered with uh, Phil One you know, to do. So it's, it's, uh, it's an action comedy, you will love it. So watch out for Bank Alert. Then of course, October 1st, my 30 years on stage concert, a cool hotel. October 1st, we're having the one night stand with Okie Bakasi in the pursuit of happiness is a concert that you can't afford to miss. Yeah. So those are the two things now and of course there are much more in the future. All right. mm -hmm. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. I hope I'm getting a ticket for this 
particular. Uh, you have a ticket. Don't find yourself to Lagos. All right. <laughs> no, thank you very much, sir. You're thank welcome. you so much, sir. All right. My name is OK. Most of you know me as OK Bakasi, a Nollywood actor, motivational comedian, a TV radio host. Um, I do a lot in the entertainment value chain in Nigeria. Yeah, as a part of my 30 years on stage celebration, I decided by way of give back to society to visit some higher institutions of learning to help discover some young and new talents. Uh, because my own story started way back on campus when I was studying agricultural engineering at the University, University of Science and Technology. Uh, I never knew that uh, there was a bigger responsibility for me in the entertainment industry in the future. So I just figured that there are lots of young people who are also in campuses looking for a platform to elevate their craft. Yeah, so we mapped out IMT, Store Management Technology, in Ugo, as our first protocol, Imo State University in Imo State Oweri, River State University of Science and Technology, or River State University where I schooled, and Abuja, University of Abuja. So we'll be going to these institutions, you know, organizing the comedy hunt. Uh, thanks to people, who, uh, companies that have supported us, like Amstel Mortar, the brand that has been nourishing Nigerians, you know, for deciding to come on this journey with us. Uh, so far, we've been to two universities, uh, IMT and IMSU, and the excitement, you know, it, it's, it's something that gladdens the heart. It, it, it made it so worth it that we decided to do this. Uh, there are many more of such projects in the future, seeing the response now, how the students love it, how the talents, and the caliber of talents that we have discovered on this tour. It's amazing how many young people who are so talented waiting for an opportunity. So I'm very happy to do this and I'll still do it again and again and again. So as you continue to follow us and our journey in the entertainment industry, we wish you well. Thanks for supporting OK Bakasi all these years. God bless you.